two little tricks, okay, that we've got that are secret. Hey folks, how are you? This is, uh, this is our friend Rocky. What I'm gonna talk to you about today is how to fit a bark collar to a dog. So um, I'm gonna show you what to do with a bark collar if you need to put one on your dog. Now there's certain things you need to do when you do get a bark collar to make sure you are able to fit it. So, now, a couple of things to remember that bark collars are, we're talking about static correction collars. I've got one here that I prepared earlier. Rox is gonna do his, Rocky's gonna do his own thing. So, what happens with a bark collar is when the dog barks, the vibration activates the unit. You wanna make sure that when the unit is activated, that it, when it goes off, um, it, it's gonna be sensitive enough to activate, but not so sensitive that it's gonna activate if it gets knocked around. So this particular one we've got, come on buddy. This particular one we've got um, has a rubber coating on it, so it won't go, go off if it gets knocked around, uh, so it's quite safe. Now, a couple of things. When you put a bark collar on a dog, you're gonna get it. There's a few things to remember. This is called the buckle. That's the male part of the buckle, and that's the female part. This end here is called the tag end, and this is the tri-clip. So with a tri-clip, it's often called the keeper, and that's where you hook the collar into here so that it will uh, lock in. So always fit a bark collar to a dog when it's empty. So if you turn it off, there might be some ping in there already. So what we do is make sure it's empty so it's not gonna activate. Look, you see that's off, but there was still one left in the capacitor. I think that's actually turned on. So I'll get my little test light make sure it's turned off and then empty the capacitor so it's not going to go off again while I'm fitting it that's very important so if I leave that like that and then I go to Rocky who's a very good boy and I put that on this is far too loose what you're looking for is a nice connection between the three probes that are the vibration detectors and the Adam's apple but if you get one that's not very sensitive and it needs to be done up firmer it's going to be too tight and your dog's going to move it to the side of the neck and it's not going to work Okay, so I've got that there. Obviously this is uh, very loose, so I'm gonna have to tighten that up. So all I do is just pull that up a little tiny bit, then push through so I get the, the, the new strap. Good boy. So that's that little bubble of uh, strap there you can see. I've just pushed that through. There we go, and I'm gonna pull the tag end to move that through. Move the tri-clip down so I can then do the adjustments. Okay, so we put that on and we feel around here don't worry about fingers under straps. You wanna be feeling around the probes to make sure you've got a good connection to the, to the skin and the Adam's apple. Number one, so that the collar can pick up the vibration. And number two, so that when it does pick up the vibration and activate, the probes are touching the skin. This needs to be a little bit firmer. And the one thing I tell people as well is as you do the collar up, the long hair will settle in. And then, let's lift that out the way. Uh, the collar will actually loosen itself off. So you've got to check the fit. So once you've got that nice fit on the dog's collar, there's two little tricks. Um, there's another collar I like as well. This one is called our Barking Dog Training Collar. Here it is on the website. There we go, stay rocking. And then if you go to the website and you look at this video, it will show you a little bit more about what to actually look for when you're deciding which bark collar is best for your dog and how they operate. It's basically based around this particular unit, which is our Barking Dog Training Collar. If you click on there, you'll go through to that and you'll also see a video on that operation on that page as well. Two little tricks, okay, that we've got that are secret. So when you buy your bark collar and you wanna get a couple of tips from us, give us a call once you've got it and we'll tell you our tips on how to do it because if you don't get it right and you don't get the collar uh, fitted correctly, you're not gonna get the consistent results you need to actually achieve a change in behavior because we're not about punishing the dog every time it barks, we're about teaching the dog a new barking habit so that you don't um, end up having a dog that um, is getting overcorrected and doesn't wanna bark again because everybody picks up um, uh, the phone and asks us, well, how does the dog get to bark when it really needs to? And the answer is very simple as well. Get a good collar that's adjustable so that it just um, hit, corrects the dog at the right time. So, all right, so this collar here has a rubber coating, which is important when it comes to those little tips. Uh, once you've got the fit right, you can then lock it off by the tri-clips. There we go. Lock it off by doing the tri-clip so it doesn't alter the fit, and then you'll know exactly what fit to do. A couple of things. Rocky's got long hair, that's a clue. The other little thing is that uh, it has a rubber coating which also helps in certain circumstances as well. So if you, don't, if you have our pet barrier dog fence and you need a bark collar as well, we've got the bark collar that can be worn at the same time, but there's a good reason why. All right, I'll sign off there. If you've got any questions, drop us a line, give us a call on our world famous phone number, 1300 the dog, 
1300 843 364. Then it's goodbye from him and it's goodbye from him. Thanks, folks.